And we have another graduate of the Funny Fest Comedy Workshop taking this stage right about now. Also, very, very funny, a man that has impressed me numerous times here for a hell of a treat. The lovely and talented Fred Kerr, everybody. Fred Kerr. Thanks. So, uh, by this summer, as you probably know, uh, marijuana is going to be legal in Canada. Yeah. We'll be able to check our saliva for cannabis, but only if you have a thing called reasonable suspicion. So you got to look, watch for an entirely new kind of check stop, where the cop just reaches in your car window with a gigantic bag of Doritos <laughs> and checks you for drool. Uh, there's a group of fertility doctors. This is in the news. Short of sperm donors, started using their own semen to fertilize patients' eggs. Sounds bizarre, but it's amazingly common. I guess these clowns figured that the uh, victims should just be grateful to have a doctor in the family. <laughs> anyway, as you'd expect, they're being sued for negligence, for breach of trust, and my personal favorite, they're also being sued for cavalier use of sperm. <laughs> Jesus. Gentlemen, who among us has not occasionally been somewhat cavalier with our sperm? I look back on my own lifetime sperm allocation. <laughs> Apart from the three kids, mostly pretty cavalier. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's been to Starbucks and had them totally get your name wrong. This ever happened? <laughs> my name's got four letters, F-R-E-D. I'm watching Barista Brittany concentrate a little too hard as she scrawls on my cup. A couple minutes later, Barista Michaela, her teammate, calls out, tall mocha, ready for her, and she squints at the cup, she says, Sorry, sir, is it Fred? Or fired? <laughs> Show us me the cup. F-I-R-E-D. Jesus. I said, you know what, Kayla, if I'm honest, it's both. <laughs> Fred and fired. But I'm at peace with it now. Listen, I don't suppose you folks got any job openings. Because I've got a Bachelor of Arts in Literature. And I'm fantastic at spelling. <laughs> In elementary school, uh, my parents signed me up for a group called Wolf Cubs. You might be familiar with these guys. Cubs are boys from the ages of 8 and 10 years old who can't do sports. <laughs> Shocking, you know, to learn that the chiseled stud you see tonight was not always this sporty, but it's true. Every gym class for me was as awkward as Justin Trudeau would feel if he were trapped in a Mensa meeting. <laughs> So the point is, I was afraid that my own athletic ineptitude would be passed on and uh, because I know these things are genetic. So I became a cub leader mostly out of guilt. The cub organization does a fantastic job preventing creepy adults from becoming leaders. They've been a lot less successful stopping satanic kids from becoming cubs. A lot of these little fuckers should just have been tasered. <laughs> So I reinforced something I guess I already knew about myself, folks, through the Cub experience, and that was that I'm the opposite of a pedophile. I can't fucking stand other people's kids. <laughs> you know, I think it's a real shame and kind of amazing that these middle-aged guys in Hollywood who've been accused of all this sexual stuff, like Harvey Weinstein and Louis C.K., ever thought that anyone needed to see their middle-aged junk. <laughs> level of confidence in my product, folks. <laughs> my chest is so hollow I can collect rainwater in it, which I'm counting on to help me when I realize my life's ambition of homelessness in Vancouver. I look in the mirror every day and I say, you know, nothing really goes with this skin color, white with red spots. I guess you'd say I'm kind of the opposite of white supremacist, folks. I'm more of a white inadequist. <laughs> You've heard people use the phrase, uh, dating myself? You've heard that phrase? I dated myself for years. Jesus. I had no choice. I had to become sexually self-sufficient. <laughs> it was long, long after high school that I ever got a date. When I did, it was super awkward. You had nothing to say to each other, so she just kind of babbled to fill the silence. Well, I prayed for sweet, sweet death. <laughs> years later, I actually found out she'd become a lesbian. And I like to think I deserve a lot of the credit for that.
Um, I think I'm just going to leave it there. Let's stick with my tongue. My name's Fred Kerr. Thank you very much for listening.